Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the key concepts video series where I try to explain IP routing key concepts in a short amount of time to give you a broad overview which you can use in conjunction with your textbooks to better understand the technology. So in this video, like I say, it's going to be EIGRP stop it, stop, <laughs> stuck in active. So let's just go on and do it. Okay, so real quick, let's draw this one out and think it through. So you can see here we've got a topology here, spiraling downwards, we've got many, many routers, but the key point here is that we're connected to this network 192.168.10.0, okay, up here. Now there could be a million routers up here, it doesn't really matter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 40, doesn't matter. Let's just say we've got a connection to this network range through this link here. But what would happen if this link failed, okay? Well, if this link failed, this router here would send a query out to its neighbours looking for the 192.168.10.0 network. Now, obviously, if we're getting to that network through this link here, this router's not going to have it because it had to go through this link to get it and this link's broken. Obviously, this router here will also not have it. In fact, none of these devices will have that link because it was all going through this link here, okay? But here's the thing, right? That's not how EIGRP works. When the link goes down, we're going to query the neighbour and wait for a reply. But what's going to happen is this router is not going to reply and this is not going to reply. What it's going to do is they're going to query their neighbours, okay? So again, broken link. So query, query, and this repeats query, query. And this just keeps going on and on. Now, ultimately, once you get to the end of the chain, what should happen is, let me just quickly draw this out. Once you've got no more routers to ask, so all these bottom routers, they will start replying, okay? And they'll effectively reply saying, listen, no luck, I don't have a route. No luck, don't have a route. No luck, don't have a route. And this will feed up the chain and get back to here that we don't have a route, which is all very well, okay? So effectively, this router knows that there is no more routes for this network and that would be fine okay but a problem can arise and let's discuss that problem okay okay so let's run the same scenario but include a slight modification so let's just say same again that this link breaks so we send out our queries okay all throughout the network all our routers okay and then we start getting our replies back, pretty much saying, sorry, don't have a route. So this just feeds up to the network. And same again here. But let's say in the case of this link here, okay? What if this link here was unidirectional or there was a lot of congestion or the router was overworked and perhaps a packet was dropped? Let's say the reply packet was dropped. What's going to happen is that this router here is going to stay active waiting for the response from this router, okay? And it gets worse. Before this one does any kind of replying, it's going to wait for this response, so therefore this router here is also not going to reply to this router, okay? So what does this actually mean? What's the implication here? When three minutes elapses as a default timer with no response from this router, this router to this uh, reply packet from this router, this router is going to assume that the reason why it didn't get a response is because the link is down. Okay, the EIGRP neighbourship is down, so it's just going to terminate the EIGRP neighbour relationship. So this goes down and we lose our EIGRP neighbours here. Okay, this section, but it gets worse, okay? Remember, like I said, is that this router will also not reply to this one because it's waiting on the response from this one. Then, because of that, this router is going to think, the reason why I've not got a response from this router is because the relationship is down. So what I'm going to do is terminate the EIGRP relationship. So it's not just this portion that gets broken off. It's in fact 
it feeds up the chain and we break this link so effectively we lose this whole part of the network in EIGRP. Now this can be recovered of course because hello packets can be sent and we can re-establish that but a lot of traffic can be lost and it can cause problems. Now one of the best ways to solve this problem and to just well mitigate it completely is to use summarization so let's just quickly talk about that before we end the video. So let's just modify this example slightly and let's just say we had quite a careful addressing scheme and this network was actually we also had 192.168.20.0 we had 192.168.30.0 so on and so forth and what we did is this router because it had all these networks it was the the entry point to all these networks what this router would do it would send out a summary route instead to these two routers and it would send a summary of 192.168.0.0 slash 16 so that's all these would have in the written table okay now in the example if we were sending that summary route and let's just say we happen to lose this network so this router now doesn't have access to that network and what it'll do is it'll send out a query okay so it'll send out the query but because it's querying for a subset i.e this network of to us which we've only got the summary route we're going to actually recognize, and when I say we, I mean these two routers are going to recognize, hey, you're querying in the wrong direction. You're supposed to have all these routes. If you've lost it, we've lost it. So effectively, what they're going to do is they're going to respond back with an infinite metric, okay? A really bad infinity symbol. <laughs> okay, but the point is we're not going to query down and have this cascading effect. We're just going to immediately reply within something like 100 milliseconds or something straight back. Nope, we don't have it, we don't have it and we completely short that possibility of all that um, cascading queries and flooding traffic and risking the chance of being stuck in active and turned down neighbour adjacencies. Okie doke. So to summarise, stuck in active happens when a route is lost and neighbours start querying each other and if for reason, be it congestion, be it unidirectional links, be it uh, an unreliable link, a reply is not received back effectively that router will just wait for three minutes on that reply and not do anything. When that three minutes elapses, it's going to tear down the neighbor relationship and obviously that can cause severe problems in the network. Okay, doc. So that's the basic overview of EIGRP stuck in active. The next one we're going to be looking at is actually another solution rather than summarization to stuck in active and it's using EIGRP stub routing. So we'll look at that one next. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon.